Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we're giving a rotating disc. It would be a, a disc that's um, uniformly the mass is uniformly distributed, so it's a solid disc. It's rotating at an angular velocity at 200 radians per second, and there's a torque applied in the opposite direction, slowing the disc down. And the torque is dependent on time. It is minus 6t squared newtons times meters. And the moment of inertia of the disk is expressed as 2 kilogram meters squared. So the questions are, first, find the time required for this to come to a stop. And secondly, how many revolutions has the disk made before coming to a stop? So how do we do that? Well, the torque is variable. So let's start with the equation F equals ma and then find the rotational equivalent. So F equals ma is what we need in order to have linear acceleration and a force applied for that linear acceleration. But in this case, for rotational motion, the equivalent equation is that the torque is equal to the mass times the linear or not the linear, well, not the mass, the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. All right, so we can see here that there's a relationship between the torque and the linear acceleration, and we have the constant or the proportionality constant in this case would be I because that's a constant two kilogram meter squared. Now we need to find the relationship of what it will take for the disc to, to slow down and come to a complete stop. So to do that, we need a relationship between this torque and that acceleration. And we can say that the acceleration by definition is equal to the change in omega divided by time. And so what we can then do is we can rewrite this as the torque is equal to I times, instead of alpha, we write the change in omega over time. And then notice that the torque is a function of time, so we'll bring the dt over here and we'll solve for d omega. So we can say that d omega is equal to 1 over I times the torque times dt. So notice I moved the dt over here, I moved the i down there, and I, I turned the equation around. So now I have an equation that tells me omega as a function of time. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to find omega, and so omega is equal to the integral of all the d omegas, which is equal to the integral of tau times dt. That's the torque times dt. So now I can plug in what the torque is equal to, and I can find out what omega is in terms of time. So notice then omega is equal to 1 over the moment of inertia times the integral of minus 6t squared times dt. So now I can integrate that. So this becomes omega is equal to minus 6 over i times t cubed over 3 plus some constant of integration. And when I simplify that, let's go over here and simplify it. So now we can write that omega is equal to minus 6 over, oh, well, minus 6 divided by 3 is minus 2. So minus 2 over i, which is 2, um, times t cubed plus a constant of integration. And so with other words, we can say omega is equal to minus t cubed plus c. Now, what happens when omega is when time is equal to zero? So I can say that omega sub naught, when time is equal to zero, is equal to zero plus c. So that means c is omega sub naught, which is equal to 200 radians per second, which therefore means that omega is equal to minus t cubed plus 200 radians per second. And so finally, I can find time when omega is equal to zero. So t is equal to question mark when omega is equal to zero. And so I plug in zero here. So zero is equal to minus t cubed plus 200, or t cubed is equal to 200, or t is equal to the cube root of 200. And so that will be the time required to reach zero omega. So we take 200 and we raise it to the one-third power. That's taking the cube root and we get 5.85 seconds. So it takes 
5.85 seconds for the disc to come to a complete stop. Now the question next is how many revolutions did it go through before it came to a stop? So for that we need to start with the definition of omega. Omega is equal to the change in the angle with respect to time which means that d theta is equal to omega times dt. And of course omega is equal to this quantity right here. So that means that d theta is equal to omega which is uh, minus t cubed plus 200 times dt and now we can integrate both sides and so that means that theta is equal to the integral of minus t cubed plus 200 times dt. When we do that we get the following we get theta is equal to that would be minus t to the fourth over 4 plus 200t plus constant of integration. Now that constant of integration that will be theta sub naught and if we take theta sub naught to be equal to zero then the constant of integration disappears and then we get theta as a function of time is equal to minus t to the fourth over four plus 200t. Now when we find theta when time is equal to 5.85 seconds that will be equal to minus 5.85 to the fourth power over 4 plus 200 times 5.85. All right, let's see what we get. 5.848 actually, if we want to be more accurate. So we're going to square that and square that again, divided by 4 equals, put a negative sign in front of that, and then plus 200 times 5.848 equals equals and it tells me 877.2 radians. So theta is therefore equal to 877.2 radians. But of course they didn't ask for radians, they asked for revolutions. So then we have to convert, we have radians, we have revolutions at the top and radians at the bottom and one revolution is 2 pi radians which means we have to divide that by 2 pi. So divide by 2, divide by pi equals and we get 139.6 revolutions. 139.6 revolutions and that's how many times a wheel turned around in the 5.85 seconds before it came to a complete stop. And that's how we do that. So first of all, notice that the force or the torque was a variable torque. So we have to write first the equation that relates alpha to torque. Then we write alpha as dw over dt. We separate the variables knowing that the torque is a function of time. So we have time times dt on the right side and omega on the left side. We integrate both sides. We find the constant of integration, which is the original omega sub naught. And then we substitute the correct time to get the value for time. And then we write omega equals d theta dt to find the angle, which is the angular distance. And so we integrate again to find the final answer in revolutions. And so that is how we do that.